Next year will mark half a century since the Lockheed L-1011 TriStar was first introduced. The aircraft was a big name as the jet age entered its next stage of evolution. Let's look at the journey of the plane. After six years of hard work, Lockheed California Company made the first delivery of the L-1011 TriStar in April 1972. The first operator of the aircraft was Eastern Airlines, who rented the plane into service the same month it was received. However, it was American Airlines that spurred the project to get underway. The carrier required a plane that could fly passengers from hubs like New York and Dallas to routes across the Atlantic and to South America. So, the operator's chief engineer, Frank Kolk, contacted the three big players in the manufacturing game – Boeing, Douglas, and Lockheed. Boeing was occupied with the development of the 737 and 747 at the time, and it was something in between these two eventual mainstays that America needed. It wanted to transport more customers than the 737, but something more fuel-efficient than the 747. Douglas's solution was the DC-10, which drew significant inspiration from one of its predecessors, the DC-8. Lockheed, however, went all-in and sought to create something innovative and fresh, making use of the latest technology. The L-1011-1 had a typical capacity of 256 in a mixed-class configuration, with a range of up to 2,680 nautical miles or 4,963 kilometers. The jet had significant cabin innovations which included glare-resistant windows, full-sized hideaway closets for jackets, and a below-deck galley. Passengers loved riding in it thanks to a unique engine configuration that reduced sound in the cabin. Flight crews appreciated its extra-wide aisles and overhead bins, but it was TriStar's pilots who had access to its most thrilling feature – an advanced fly-by-wire automatic flight control system. TriStar pilots simply had to dial altitude and course changes into the flight control system and monitor their instruments, and the L-1011 would fly and land on its own, descending smoothly onto the runway by locking into an airport's radio beacons, Lockheed Martin shares on its website. Thanks to its impressive autopilot feature, the TriStar was given special clearance by the FAA to land during severe weather conditions. Whereas other wide-body jets had to be diverted to alternate airports, L-1011 passengers could rest assured that they would touch down precisely where they were scheduled to land. TWA was a huge fan of the jet, praising it as one of the safest planes in the world. Meanwhile, Delta Airlines became the L-1011 TriStar's biggest customer, taking 70 units. The production of L-1011 continued until 1983, with Lockheed Martin noting that the jet had an impressive in-service rate that reached 98.1% reliability. Altogether, the L-1011 was a superb aircraft for its time. However, since it was highly ambitious, it was beaten to the market by a year by a key rival in the form of the DC-10. This meant that the L-1011 lost some vital market share to its main competitor. Financial troubles proved too much to overcome. A total of 250 TriStar jets were produced by Lockheed, and the L-1011 marked the company's final commercial passenger airliners. But the company exited on a high note, having created, in one pilot's words, the most intelligent airliner ever to fly. What do you think of the Lockheed L-1011 TriStar? Did you ever fly on the aircraft over the years? Let us know in the comments section. In addition to our daily YouTube videos, Simple Flying publishes over 150 articles and a podcast every week. If you're looking for the latest aviation news and insights, visit simpleflying.com. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe before you go.